Hello, I'm going to demonstrate how to trap floats in stranded colour work. I'm setting up here for 200 stranded colour work first. I will show you how to trap floats in continental stranded colour work with both yarns held continental. But first of all, I'm going to show you um, the way that I typically do it. I do my own stranded knits with um, the yarns held in each hand for 200 stranded colour work. I've set things up so that um, my continental held yarn, that's the yarn that's in my left hand, is um, the contrast colour, that's the foreground colour, and the yarn that I'm holding in my right hand uh, for English style knitting, that is my background colour. Now that is how I always set up the yarns in my standard colour work because this is the yarn that is dominant, the yarn that is held continental style is the dominant yarn in stranded colour work or in the case of um, if you're holding both yarns continental the yarn that is furthest from the point of your finger when you're holding them both this way that yarn would be furthest from the point of your finger and that would be the dominant yarn because held that way and held this way this yarn carries below the English held yarn on the back of the work it is floating below the English held yarn um, when we're floating behind some contrast colour stitches um, the English held yarn floats uh, and at the crossover uh, when the we swap so that it's the continental yarn that's floating uh, it's very visible on the back of the work that it's the English held yarn is floating above the continental held yarn uh, in the way that they lie parallel to each other and that means that the continental held yarn I'll just push my glasses higher up on my nose the continental held yarn has further to travel up to get into the stitch because it's coming up from below the English held yarn and um, which means that the first stitch at a colour change or um, where we're switching to continental held yarn that first stitch the stitch is elongated and when we're swapping from continental to English held yarn again it's the continental um, the contrast colour stitch is elongated because that's worked in the um, continental method and that elongation makes the stitches stand out more in the resulting stranded colour work they stand forward they they pop more in the design because they're longer and um, larger in in essence than the um, english held stitches uh, this is called yarn dominance it may well be a term that you've come across and wondered about and and not thoroughly understood it's not something that you have to swatch to discover you it will always be the case that the yarn that is held continental in 200 standard color work or if you're holding both yarns continental the one that was held furthest from the end of your finger will be the one that stands out most in the colour work. Now this yarn, the continental held yarn, is the one that in any standard colour work it is um, going to be trapped much more frequently than the English held yarn. So this method that I'm going to show you first is the method that you're most likely to need to use in a piece of standard colour work. So I'm going to just knit loads of background colour stitches. We'll pretend that we're doing a run of 11 stitches and I'm going to trap that continental held yarn on the fifth stitch. So there I have, um, no, on the sixth stitch, isn't it? I've knitted five and now I'm going to trap this continental held yarn. I hope this is in camera. So I'm going to enter the next stitch in the standard manner to knit it and whereas ordinarily I'm just holding the continental held yarn out of the way, um, on this occasion, to trap the flow, all I'm going to do is take the point of my working needle under that yarn from the left-hand side of it. Um, now that's the opposite to the way that I would take the needle under it if I were picking it up to knit it. So I'm entering it from the opposite direction to if I were going to actually knit with it. So I'm taking the point of the needle under that yarn from mm -hmm. the left hand side of it and then I wrap my English held yarn as normal and then I pull the needle back under the continental held yarn and back through the stitch all in one simple movement and drop the stitch from the needle and then that's it. That yarn is now carrying over 
the English held yarn instead of carrying under it as it usually would. And then all I do is continue knitting. The very next stitch I complete it in the ordinary manner with holding the continental held yarn out of the way. Um, and as you can see, it leaves behind the trap. So it's just trapped behind that one stitch there. I'll knit a, another four before we trap again so that I can show you it again. One, two, three, four. So let's trap again. Here we go. Enter the stitch, take the point of the working needle underneath the continental held yarn from the left hand side of it. Wrap the English held yarn in the normal manner and then draw the point of the working needle back under the continental held yarn and back through the stitch in the normal manner, all in one nice fluid movement and then drop the stitch from the needle and there we are, the yarn's trapped. So I'll just knit one more stitch. So I've shown you two traps where I'm trapping this, the continental held yarn. Now it may happen in some patterns, certainly in my William design there are frequent traps where it is in fact the English held yarn that is being um, trapped because the motif itself in my William sweater um, is so large uh, there are very long runs of contrast colour stitches in it so there's frequent trapping of the yarn in that in fact in my charts I typically um, chart the traps I show you where to trap I'll explain why in a minute but let's do the technique first so I'm going to knit 11 stitches at least 11 stitches probably more in this contrast colour there we go three four five and now I'm ready to trap my English held yarn have you noticed I don't let go of the yarns at all these methods of trapping floats they're very convenient and easy to work whilst I'm doing my knitting without dropping and fiddling around with yarn so I'm ready to trap the English held yarn I enter the stitch <coughs> in the standard manner for knitting it and then I wrap my English held yarn as though I am going to knit with it. The same wrap as usual, um, the same direction of wrap and everything. And then I pick up the continental held yarn, this time from the right hand side of it, uh, because I am actually going to knit with it. So it's a standard direction in which I pick it up when knitting with it. And now here's the bit, we mm. unwrap the English held yarn and then complete the stitch in the normal manner. And that's it, there's the English held yarn trapped behind that stitch and I'll continue and do another, I think let's do another four, two, three, four. Can you see my English held yarn is holding away from the needle behind the stitch that it was trapped behind. It shows you it's nice and firmly secured there. So here we go, the next stitch where I'm going to trap it, enter the stitch as usual, wrap the English held yarn pick up the continental held yarn, taking the needle point under it from the right hand side of it, um, unwrap the English held yarn and then complete the stitch in the normal manner. So that's how to trap, I'm going to do one final trap, uh, a continental held trap this time at the end of this needle because I'm going to turn a corner. I'm working magic loop, so I'm gonna let go of the yarns and I'm just going to turn and set up for um, how we work if we're holding both yarns, continental method. We'll keep the dominance as it was previously. So I will hold the uh, continental held yarn furthest from my finger ends and the um, English held yarn closest to my finger ends. Now. I do this differently to Sarah. I, can't, I haven't yet mastered the uh, technique of holding both yarns ar around my uh, index finger with things happening here, the way that Sarah does it. I typically hold my yarns this way. So we've got the continental held yarn is furthest from my finger and the end and there's the well it's not the English held yarn that's the dump the contrast color and the main color the background color I'm going to knit a few stitches in background color one two 
three. I really should practice Sarah's technique, shouldn't I? I should be using this knit along, the mystery knit along that we're doing together as an opportunity to, for me to learn a new technique as well. I agree. Uh, I'm not confident enough yet to do it for a tutorial though. <laughs> right, so we've done four stitches English style and now I want to wrap, uh, I want to trap this continental held yarn. And it's basically the same as um, it is when uh, wrapping English style. I'm just taking the point of my needle under that yarn from the left hand side of it, the opposite way to if I was actually going to knit with it. And then I go and pick up the English held yarn from the right hand side of it and pull it through underneath below the continental held yarn, uh, the, sorry, the contrast colour yarn. Sorry that I'm using the wrong terms here to complete the stitch. Let's see if I can uh, force myself to use the correct terms. So main colour, four stitches, two, three, four. Contrast colour, take the needle point, so I've entered the stitch in the normal manner, take the needle point under the contrast co colour from the left hand side of it and then go and pick up the main colour from the right hand side of it taking the needle down below it from the right hand side and then pull it back through the stitch pulling it below the continental uh, the uh, contrast color and there it is complete and let's carry on and knit just a couple of more main color stitches and there you can see the yarn is trapping nicely on the back of the work so those are all english held stitches and we don't have a supremely long float uh, not English stitches, those are all main colour stitches and we don't have a supremely long float of the contrast colour yarn behind them. It's nicely held in where we've trapped it there and there. Right, however, let's now look at trapping the main colour yarn continental method. So we're going to knit several stitches of the contrast colour and then this is a, a bit more complicated. We're going to go down below the English, uh, sorry, not the English, the main colour. We're going to take our needle point below that as though we were going to knit with it. So we're taking the needle point below the English held yarn from the right hand side of it and below the continental held yarn from the right hand side of it. So in one movement below both yarns. And then, oh gosh, I'm off camera there, I apologise. I'm going to take the point of my working needle below both yarns as in one movement, taking the needle point below from the right hand side. And then I'm going to bring the point of my needle back over the contrast colour and under the, English, uh, the main colour and I might have to do a little bit of fiddling here with my finger to get that yarn out of the way so that I can pull the contrast colour through the stitch without pulling the main colour through with it. There we are, that's done. Let's just pick, pull this away. The I'm trying to separate these stitches, these yarns on my needle. If you're working it with a knitting thimble this is a lot easier. I'm now continuing with the contrast colour the next few stitches. I'll do one more trap of the English, uh, not the English, the uh, main colour with both yarns held continental method. So enter the stitch in the standard manner to knit it, take the needle under both yarns from the right hand side, take the needle point back over the contrast colour yarn and under the main colour yarn. Uh, I use my finger to tidy things up then so that the English, the main colour is pulled away and the contrast colour is left wrapped on the needle and I pull the contrast colour back through the stitch. And then next I need to pull the English yarn back away again so that I'm picking up the continental, uh, the contrast colour from next to it. <coughs> Excuse me. And that, folks, is how to trap floats in stranded colour work. Thank you very much.